UFC 277 is here and joining us is the headline act Juliana Pena, the women's bantamweight champion. Juliana, kia ora and hello. Hello, thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm going to ask you the same thing. How are you and how has this camp been going for you? Um, I'm great and this camp has been amazing. I feel awesome and I'm just happy to be here. I am ready to put a bow on this and, and be done with it. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit more about that. What do you mean by, have, by putting a bow on it? Um, you know, I have been uh, in this camp for over 20 weeks. You know, when I was on The Ultimate Fighter, I, I went straight into camp and I was even starting a pre-camp while I was on The Ultimate Fighter. So I'm just ready to get this done and I am ready to start my summer and, and get away and, and breathe a little bit. It must be a relief knowing that this fight is finally here, especially coming from The Ultimate Fighter and spending... Up I mean, you're not spending all that time with Amanda Nunez, but you're spending a lot of time with her in your orbit. So how, what is that like? Um, you know, it wasn't that bad for me. Um, I think that my main focus was just finding these stars and to, to kind of shed some light on who my fighters were, what they're all about and their fighting styles, and just making sure that the world was getting to know their best, most authentic self. And so it was actually a really great experience for me. I had a really great time. And, you know, Amanda doesn't bother me at all. And so it wasn't anything where I was like, couldn't stand to be around her, or, you know, um, her orbiting around around me was you know aggravating it was whatever I was just primarily there to make sure that my fighters were beating her fighters and that was the most important thing at the end of the day your UFC career started similarly on a UFC um, ultimate fighter how did it feel to switch from student to coach um, it was a great experience for me. Um, I think that, you know, when you reach a certain status of martial arts, it's your job and your duty to give back. So like they say, when you become a black belt, now you have to give back to the community that gave you so much. And so for me, becoming a champion was, you know, that kind of pinnacle for me and now it was my job to give back to the next generation of upcoming fighters so it was really a joy um it was a privilege and uh, I was just so grateful to do that because it's something that I've always wanted to do and so I'm, I'm glad I, I finally got to check it off the bucket list it's awesome how does that help you in terms of you know this fighter that I know you have the bounce already but it still feels like this fighter this champion that you are still becoming yeah, you know, it was a little bit of stepping into my light as as the champion, and it was like my first venture of being the champion. And so for me, it was it was a great setting and atmosphere because I had already been there before. I had already gone through the formation of the show and, and kind of seen the dynamic and known what I was up against because I had that Ultimate Fighter training wheels experience prior. And so I felt very comfortable. I felt in my zone. You know, I knew everyone, and it was just uh, an exciting thing to just get these wins for my team and, and just to beat Amanda um, at, at something and, and, and getting her used to losing, you know, so it was, it was a, it was a really fun experience for me. Yeah, I think one takeaway I took from that fight at UFC 269 was that you did, you showed that she's human, like everybody else, you humanized her. Um, do you think back to that fight? Do you watch back the tape and, you know, use it as a little bit of homework for this fight ahead? And, and what do you think of your performance? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. I, I have watched it back and I do study it. And there are some things that I think that I did well, but there's some things that I needed to change and to sharpen up as well. And that's something that I have gone back to the drawing board on. Um, there's a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, if you will, for the fact that I knew that I was going to win, but I knew that people were going to say, oh, it was just a, a lucky night. And so that that is not... Um, enough satisfaction to me to have won the belt. And, and I don't live on my past accomplishments. I, I know what I'm capable of and I know that I'm capable of so much more. And so I'm taking that as uh, we need to live presently and, and forget about living in the past and figure out what we're gonna do to get this hand raised on Saturday night. And so that has been my main focus, my main motivation and, and the main reason why I wanted this rematch. It's just to, to solidify my name and to cement my legacy in the UFC as being the new bantamweight queen. <laughs> get it, yes. <laughs> um, I know you say not looking back into the past, but that fight, you didn't just defeat her. I mean, you first of all, you did what a lot of women have tried and failed at, and that's, you know, beating her. Some of them is to even step in the octagon with her. 
but you took her into such deep waters that she was drowning and couldn't come back from it. You know, is that kind of the way you approach a fight where you just take them right into your style and make sure there's no exit plan for them? Right. Yes. Uh, it's all about me and, and implementing my strengths and, and fighting the way that I want to fight. I have to not um, think about being locked in there with Amanda Nunes. I have to be thinking Amanda Nunes is getting locked in there with me and, and I am chasing my prey. And so I fight the way that I fight. I do what I do and I focus on what I can do and what I know I can do. And, uh, you know, that has been some of the reasons why I've had some successes and also been some of the reasons why I've had some failures. But but that's why we get back in there. That's why we're fighting at the highest level. And, and that's why I love to compete. I love to fight. And uh, it's my passion. And, and, you know, I'm kind of baptism by fire. All of the experience that I've had in fighting has been underneath the bright lights and inside the cage. So in, in some senses, um, my career is still in diapers. But in other senses, I've had enough experience to know that I have to fight to the capabilities of, of myself and, and not so much worry about what they do, but just focus on what it is that I do. Mm. And you've, I mean, you've been involved in mixed martial arts for so long. You're, you're clocking up 10 years in the UFC alone, but the last six months has been a little different with that belt around your waist. So how has life been as a champion? Um, life as a champion has been, you know, pretty normal for the most part. They've been flying me first class here and there, and, and I could definitely get used to that. Um, aside from that, um, you know, you get recognized uh, here and there, not as much as I think that um, I will later on in the future, um, but that's my job, right? My job is to make sure that I do get noticed more when I go into the grocery stores and when I'm, um, you know, doing regular stuff. And so that's why um, I'm so excited for this fight is so that I can continue to cement my legacy and continue to build my brand and, and, and reach out to the audiences that might not have ever seen a fist fight or, or an MMA fight or a UFC fight before, or, or maybe reach some other moms or, or something else that they can, you know, kind of join in and, and join me on this journey as, as the UFC bantamweight champion. Uh, it's funny you bring up mom because I can, I'm pretty sure I can see your daughter running around in the background there. Happens to me all the time with my children as well. But I mean, does it put a little bit more of maybe not responsibility, but you know, just puts a little bit more on what you're doing and the purpose of what you're doing when you have a little girl, you know, running around looking up to looking up to mom, the bantamweight champion. Yes. Um, and I would definitely say that in one regard, she's so proud of me and she thinks it's awesome. And then in the other regard, she doesn't give a hoot. I mean, <laughs> honestly, she does not care. And and it would be nice to be able to, you know, be able to sit her down and, and make her focus in on, on how important this is. But I think that that normalcy is kind of what's keeping me humble and keeping me grounded and, and realizing that at the end of the day, kids are going to be kids and they're just going to play and, and, and realize that, you know, the only thing that's important is just them being a kid. And, and I don't want to take that away from her too much. Um, I, I, I like the fact that there can be a sense of normalcy around it. It's a good distraction from, from the, the real uh, thing, which is, you know, that I'm going to be fighting soon. So I, I welcome it. Yeah. And I imagine that what, uh, the lifestyle would be very much normal for her. She's born into it, right? She really is. Yes. Her dad owns a jujitsu gym. She's got three little stripes on her white belt. She's wrestling the boys, taking down the kids. And, and she goes to all of my practices. She's literally been born and raised in the gym. And, and literally, if it's not the gyms with me, it's the gyms with him. And, and she's constantly around um, mixed martial arts. It's amazing. And it, uh, it goes from gyms to the UFC octagon. And it, it's crazy to think that that's going to be her normalcy. <laughs> Yeah, I know. She doesn't really realize how, yeah. how lucky she is yet, but hopefully when she looks back, she'll see, hey, actually, my mom was pretty cool. <laughs> was. Oh, I, I think fighting's cool, so hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, UFC 277, it's a great card. Um, you're there front row center um, as the main event. What are you wanting to put out? What kind of performance are you wanting to put out? Because it's pretty hard to top what you already did last time around, but what are you wanting to showcase this time? I'm wanting to showcase a win, a win, a win. I don't care how it comes. I don't know when it's going to come. I don't know how it's going to come. But the most important thing is, is a win, is a win, is a win, is a win. And I'm going to literally give my life to get my hand raised on Saturday night. And, and, and I don't care how it looks as long as I get that hand raised. 
Look, we are very, very excited to see this fight and the rest of the card. Of course, we have our very own Kai Kata France from here in New Zealand on the card also. So exciting times ahead. We wish you all the very best. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you.